sorry. Oh, you're Pat Cash. Yeah, how'd you know? Tennis racket gave you away. What? Never mind, just help me up. I thought tennis stars were supposed to have quick reflexes. Be light on their feet. Well, look, sorry, I was, I was really clumsy. Okay, I'll accept your apology if you do me one favour. What's that? Give me your autograph. My little brother's a fan. Sure, anything. On one condition, that you buy me a drink. Oh, okay, why not? Ten minutes after we sail in the Hemskirk route. Sure. Can I carry something? No, nah, not a thing. Are you kidding me? No, it's true. You came from a little town in County Wexford Island called Inniscorthy, which is where my dad's ancestors come from. So there's a good chance we're related. So you, being off tennis with an injury, thought you might come to Tasmania to retrace the famous ancestors' footsteps? Something like that, yeah. <laughs> it's too good to be true. Australian tennis star Pat Cash on the trail of bush ranger ancestor Martin Cash. What's wrong with that? Oh, nothing. Nothing at all. Look, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to send you up. It just... Came. <laughs> I don't know. Look, I'll tell you what I'll do. You tell me where Martin Cash went in Tasmania, and, like the good, loyal Tasmanian I am, I'll tell you what I can about each place, so you can make the most of your trip. Okay? Sure, you've got nothing better to do. Not at this stage, no. So, begin. When and where did Martin Cash arrive in Tasmania? 1837, Hobart, with his mistress, Bessie Clifford. What's the matter? Are you shocked because he had a mistress? Oh, don't be stupid. All right, uh, to begin, if you want to get an idea of what Hobart was like in the early days, take a look at Salamanca Place. That's more or less where he would have come ashore when he got to Hobart. With Bessie Clifford. All right, with Bessie. They'd notice a few changes now, though. The old warehouses have been done up. They use them for all sorts of things. Then every Saturday they have a market. You never know what you might pick up there. Of course, Martin and Bessie would have had to look for somewhere to live, so they probably strolled up to Battery Point to find some lodgings. Some good places to eat in Battery Point these days. All over Hobart, actually. Much better food than Martin and Bessie would have been able to find. Heaps of places still standing in Hobart that Martin and Bessie would have seen. But of course, there are lots of others where they'd notice a difference. <laughs> Nightlife's changed a bit. If you want to get a really good look at Hobart, the best place to go is the top of the mountain. I don't reckon Martin ever got up there. Might have been too much of a walk. Do you remember anything special about the time you spent in Hobart? Well, he lived in Hobart a few times, but when he finished bushranging, and when he got out of prison for the last time, 
He was given a job looking after the gardens near Government House. Ah, I don't think he'd recognise them now. Was he ever in the jail at Richmond? Well, he was on a road gang there once, so I wouldn't be surprised. If he was on a road gang, I suppose he would have crossed the Richmond Bridge. Why are we suddenly talking about Richmond? I thought we were doing Hobart first. Well, it's so close to Hobart, I thought I might as well get it in now. Walking distance? Not quite. Half an hour's drive. Martin would have walked it. When he and Bessie left Hobart, they walked all the way to Launceston. You're kidding. No. But why would they want to do a thing like that? No jobs in Hobart. I thought he was a bush ranger. Bush rangers don't need jobs. That all came later. The system pushed him into it. Yeah, I bet. Look, at this stage, he was trying to make an honest living. To support his mistress, Bessie Clifford. You're in Launceston, right? Just tell me about Launceston. Right, Launceston. Well, in many ways, they'd find Launceston more changed than Hobart. Not so much the city itself. A lot of it's really nicely preserved. Things like the Penny Royal world. Guess what Launceston's got the longest one in the world of? What? A chairlift. It's got the longest single span chairlift in the world. the chairlift there's a really nice restaurant. No shortage of good restaurants in Launceston. Great. There was another famous bush ranger who used to hang around Launceston. Literally. <laughs> Not sure about that. Anyway his name was Matthew Brady and he had a look out on the Tamer River where he could see miles and miles along the road in the river. And not very far from where he had his lookout, there's a brand new village called Grindelwald, with its own church and its own lake. <laughs> Does your tennis injury allow you to play golf? Very gently. Well, if you aggravated it on the casino golf course, you could go inside and rest it at the tables. Did he get his job? Who? Your shady ancestor. No, he had to go to Longford. Oh, it's nice around there. There's some beautiful places in the Midlands. Tell me what your name is. Well, you haven't asked. And I haven't offered the information because in the circumstances I've been trying to put off feeling stupid. It can't be that bad. Yes, it can. It's Tessa Clifford. Tessa Clifford? As in Bessie Clifford, the mistress? Mm -hmm. Oh. Where did they head next? Well, Mr. Cash and Miss Clifford. If you want to put it like that. Bingo. Wherever that is, he got a job looking after cows. Oh, very romantic. Well, Fingal's out towards the east coast. Did he ever get out to the east coast? Don't think so. Oh, pity. He missed some really fantastic places.
If you go inland a bit, there's a strange old mining town called Derby. The northeast's great. Little towns, beautiful farmland, and rainforest. Well, if he got seven years for larceny, he must have been a crook. He wasn't. He was a victim of the times. Oh, yeah. What happened then? Well, that's when he was in the road gang at Richmond. He escaped. He was on the run for a while. He went back for Bessie, and they sort of went into hiding. A place called The Channel. Oh, that's Don Tricasto Channel, south of Hobart. There's a big island called Bruni, and the channel separates it from the coast. <laughs> There's a place called Hastings down there. That's where the famous caves are, and a swimming pool that's fed by hot springs. And there's a funny little railway at Ida Bay that used to carry limestone. It carries tourists now. How long were they in hiding? Not that long. He was arrested and sent to Port Arthur. Oh, poor Bessie. What about Martin? He tried to escape a couple of times, then he finally made it. Did he go back for Bessie? Bessie had found other interests. Oh, poor Martin. What's the matter? I suppose that's when he decided to become a bush ranger. Yeah. Oh, I heard he was a very polite bush ranger and very considerate to the ladies. He was. Where did he bush range? North of Hobart, Derwent Valley, New Norfolk. He showed very good taste. It was up in the lake country. So when he got caught and they sent him to Norfolk Island, that was it? No more bush ranging? No, he did his time. Came back and settled in Hobart. He grew apples. He didn't do any more travelling? Don't think so. He didn't get to my part of the world then. Where's that? Stanley. Tiny little town right up the northwest. <laughs> I love it. It's a pity old Martin didn't see the northwest, but I suppose Bessie might have. You never know. She'd have liked it. What's your favourite part of Tasmania? I'm not sure. I like the wild parts. I like the rainforest and the Helia Gorge. 
I like the area around Queenstown at sunset. The Gordon River's fantastic. My real favourite, well, <laughs> I can never go past the southwest wilderness. Yeah, definitely the southwest. Well, it's been great. I have to get some sleep. What about the disco? It's a tiny little town in the northwest. I think it's called Stanley. Which way would I go? You just turn right at the highway, Mr. Cash. You can't miss it. Good luck. Thanks very much. <laughs> 